Hi, my name is Rebeja Dragos, and today I'll be hosting a workshop on a core component of Multiverse 6, ESDTs. But first, what is an ESDT? ESDT, or E-Standard Digital Token, is a system used on the Multiverse 6 blockchain for creating and managing different types of digital tokens. In simple terms, these tokens are like digital currencies or collectibles that people can own, trade, and use. I like other blockchains where custom tokens need a dedicated smart contract like ERC20, ESDT transfers are executed at the protocol level without a smart contract or virtual machine. This means this method ensures that ESDTs are highly efficient, handling and transferring tokens become more secure, quicker, and cost effective. ESDTs offer the same scalability and speed as the native EGLD token while also providing composability. Since ESDTs are implemented at the protocol level, they offer a higher level of security. There is no need for extra audits on a smart contract, as the underlying protocol has already been thoughtfully vetted and secured. This reduces the risk of vulnerabilities and potential exploits, ensuring a safer and more reliable experience for users and developers alike. From the token storage perspective, the information for the wallet's tokens is stored in the account storage, with only the wallet's owner having control over it. This ensures true ownership and prevents unauthorized changes or transfers of tokens. Since there is no smart contract involved, vulnerabilities that could result in lost funds are eliminated. To grasp the concept, think of an account storage as a list of key value pairs. Tokens are stored in the account storage using a key created by concatenating Elrond ESDT string with the hex encoding of the token identifier. The value represents the token type combined with the quantity held in the wallet. ESDTs can be of three types. Fungible tokens are interchangeable like currencies, while Non-fungible tokens are unique and one-of-a-kind, like digital artwork. Semi-fungible tokens combine both of these properties. Fungible tokens are a type of ESDT that can be exchanged from one another as they have equal value. These tokens have a specific property called the number of decimals, which determines how many decimal points a token can have. For instance, if a fungible token has six decimals, the value of 100 units of the token will be represented as 100 times 10 to the power of 6. Its nominated value will be displayed as 100 followed by 6 zeros after the decimal point. NFTs and SFTs do not have decimals. NFTs have only one unit per nonce, while SFTs can have multiple units per nonce. Think of NFTs as unique pieces of art that are part of the same collection. All NFTs within the collection share the same token identifier but have different nonces to represent their uniqueness. On the other hand, SFTs can be linked to collectible playing cards. All possible variations are bundled into a single collection, which means they share the same token identifier. However, each unique card has a distinct nonce, and there can be multiple duplicates of the same card, representing by the same loss. The other properties of the NFTs and SFTs are royalties, a percentage that creators earn from NFT transactions, hash, an optional field containing the NFT metadata hash, attributes, a field for additional info. Attributes field is incre incredibly versatile, as it can encode various types of information. For example, you could store the level or experience of your in-game NFT in the attributes field. What makes this feature truly powerful is its dynamic nature, allowing attributes to be updated over time. This enables users to increase the experience or other properties of their NFTs, adding value and interactivity to the digital assets. URIs are the media files that will be used to display the art content of the NFT. Now, I'm very excited to present you the next evolution in DeFi tokens. Meta ETDs takes all the features from the SFTs, adding the decimal representation of the fungible tokens. That's the goal solution for DeFi projects 
as MetaUSDTs are very versatile and can be used in multiple scenarios. Here, we can see the attributes of unlocked max MetaUSDT. If we decode the attributes, we can see the information it stores. Developed with the composability in mind, the information is not stored by any smart contract, but into a MetaUSDT itself, and it's a great way for different protocols to interact with each other seamlessly. As for managing tokens, even though no smart contract is required, there's still a system smart contract at the protocol level called ESDT system smart contract. It only deals with issuing tokens and managing them, but it doesn't handle transfers, minting, or burning. Since the tokens have no smart contract, there are some properties that can be enabled or disabled. Those properties are applicable to all ESDT types or only specific for non-fungible ESDTs. Even though the token manager has some extra abilities, they don't need to do everything themselves. That's where special roles come in handy. The token manager can pick another address to handle those tasks. The manager of an SDT token can set or unset special roles for a given address. All the available types of SDTs has the ESDT transfer role that restricts transferability of the token only to the addresses that have the, uh, the specific role and what those addresses can send to any other address. Sometimes action involves working with the ESDT system smart contract, but most of the time there's no contract to call for dealing tokens. Instead, there are many spe special built-in functions that make it easier. Those are already well documented on the official documentation website at docs.multiverse6.com. Transferring ESDT's tokens is done by using three built-in functions. You can choose which one fits you best depending on the type of the token or how many tokens are being transferred in the same time. Let's take a closer look by starting with the ESDT transfer. We'll specify the sender, the receiver, EGLD transfer value will be set to zero, and we set the gas limit required. In the data field, we specify the built-in function name followed by the token identifier hex encoded. After we also indicate the amount to be sent, denominated and hex encoded, we can do the job. If we want to transfer non-fungible tokens, we will choose ESDT NFT transfers. This time, the receiver will be set the same as the sender and the actual receiver will be specified in the data field, hex encoded. The only difference is that after specifying the token identifier hex encoded, we will also indicate the nodes of the NFT called for hex encoded. Since it's an NFT, the amount will be always one. We can transfer SFTs in the same way, but this time we can also indicate the amount we want to transfer. For the meta ESDTs, the amount will be denominated depending on the number of decimal sets and hex encoded. Using multi ESDT NFT transfer by providing enough gas, gas, we are also allowed to transfer a single ESDT by simply specifying the numbers of the tokens being transferred. We can also send fungible tokens as the noise will be always zero. The most important part here is that we can transfer multiple ESDTs at once. You only need to indicate the correct number of ESDTs being transferred and to enumerate the ESDT details one by one. The ESDT does not require to have the same type. We can send fungible, meta ESDTs, and NFTs in the same type. Interacting with smart contracts is also very easy. Indicating the smart contract address as receiver and specifying the endpoint name in the data field. We will, also, we will send one EGLD to the wrapping contract and we will receive one wrapped EGLD. There is one wrapped EGLD contract for each shard. We can also send ESDTs when calling the smart contract. First, we will call the ESDT transfer building function with the wrapped EGLD ESDT details. 
After that, we will specify the endpoint name as we did in, with the wrapping, but this time we will also hex encode the endpoint name. If the endpoint also receives parameters after the endpoint name, we can also add arguments. Those arguments will be used when calling the endpoint. That's it. Now, I hope you have a better understanding of ESDTs on Multiverse 6. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.